So here's the piano. It uh, had this nameplate on it when I first got it, the road, Heisenberg SA. But you can see that's a little extra plate, four screws. And here's what it said when you took that plate off. Montague, Heisenberg. So I'm deconstructing it because it's going to have to go upstairs to make way for a new piano. There's the action. Interesting to see action how it works. I push the little little button, which is where the camera comes. You can see. Compensations and very clever inventions. throws the hammer at the key. It hits the bottom with a special shape here so that as soon as it's done it it's out of the way and the camera the, the hammer carries on. So the idea was take the various bits that I can off the piano and it would be light enough to take upstairs. That is simply not true. Uh, it's still with nothing in it enormously heavy and all the advice I've seen on the internet is get professionals to do it you've got to mend yourself and everything so so I'm not doing that but in taking everything apart it gave me a chance to try things out have a really good look at the problem area which is this bridge but I took all the keys out because they might have had some weight in it might have helped in doing that and you can hear now the sound get when there's no action in the piano it means every string at the moment is free to vibrate so you get a kind of massive reaction to any sound in the room almost like a sleeping dragon got its eyes half open now any noise can be reverberated so underneath this piece of wood that goes in the middle of all the keys there's a piece of white tape looks like what we'd call masking tape now but I suspect this may well be a hundred years old and on that it's written Montague stroke Barode now when I took that Barode panel off here it very much appeared that it hadn't been taken off for a long long time it wasn't stuck with glue it was stuck with just having been there for a long time. So I suspect anyone who knew that it also had the name Montague was right in the early days before this second plate had been applied to it. So right from the days of its commissioning they may have had known that it was between two possible piano dealers. It's got a serial number this. There you go, you can hear now the, the vibrations. Concentrate on the serial number here, which is right. There's 7973. We don't really know the factory, so both the nameplates say Eisenberg. So I looked up Eisenberg on the internet, and they've got a piano shop there that had been around for at least 80 years. So I emailed them and I got this nice reply from Thomas Humph. What we found out is that Barode was a salesman in London in 1897, 241 High Road. Maybe he bought a piano in Eisenberg and put a sign, and you can see the screws later with his name on it. Lots of sellers did it. They ordered a piano mod without a firm sign to put their own one there. To get information, if it was really made in Eisenberg, you'd have to open it and look for a special signature on the steel frame. Well, I haven't seen anything like that, so we don't know. Here in Eisenberg, there's never been a company like this. There were a lot of piano ma manufacturers in Eisenberg up to World War II. You can find out about them in a book published by Boczynski Verlag, Frankfurt. I do hope I could help you a little bit. Yours sincerely, Thomas Humph. So I bought it six years ago at John Reed Pianos. 
It was advertised as a Baroque German upright piano, probably 1920s. They had replaced all the strings. You can see they're quite brilliant and shiny coppers. The upper strings as well, as they were all replaced. I don't know at what point this bridge work was done. I'm going to come and focus in on that in a second. The hammers are all brand new hammers. Dampers look new as well. I could, can't remember if they told me if they've replaced it. Probably if they've replaced the hammers, they've replaced all of that. So the action, which has been worked by George, the piano technician, into a fantastic action, is all looking looking good, looking new. Here are all the keys. It bends slightly in the middle, different ways to accommodate the poles in the middle, so you get a gap between the treble in the middle and the bass. The keys are all looking fine. I'm not sure they're original actually, but I think they may be recovered. If they're ivory, they're very white. They look like plastic keys to me. And here's all the uh, pins that the keys go on. George has adjusted the heights and all of this so that the keys just perfect actually now. 